What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Treads Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson. And today is episode two of the Reverse Flow Smoker Build Series. And if you're just joining us last week, we talked about all the tools and things we're gonna need for this build. And now it's time to start building. And whenever starting a new pit build, I always like to start with the frame. It is literally the foundation of this build and the pit itself. And for a pit like this, it's just some simple square tubing, comes together real quick, and it'll help get this pit off the ground. So I think it's time to start cutting up some square tube. frame all cut up, got it on the table here. This is my second time ever using this table and I gotta say it is super convenient because it's made with such precision that I can completely trust these stops to be straight, which is great. Perfect corners on there. But this is the only problem with this table is that it's not very big, which is why I originally built this giant four by eight foot table, but it's not straight. So I clamped it over here, made it as square as I could just to make sure that this thing stays aligned. And whenever you're making a frame like this, nice and tight. Or welding in general, you always wanna clean your weld spot. That's why I went around and cleaned these up. That way you're not trying to weld through the mill scale, which is this gray stuff that comes on all hot rolled steel, unless you get pickled and oiled steel. And it'll just make for better penetration <laughs> and cleaner weld. Got the welder set up pretty much on whatever it tells me to do. This is 14 gauge steel, so I got it set to 14 gauge. The right kind of wire that I'm using, and it's, yeah, it's very simple to use a welder like this. But yeah, let's get this thing put together. And as you may have just noticed, I did this little bead by bead because these ends are so thin, you're really likely to burn through them if you try and do a solid weld. So just going dot for dot is a great way to make sure you don't blow right through the material. Look dead good. Looking nice and clean. So as you can see, I threw some casters on. These are some heavy duty six inch casters. And I highly recommend trying to find some heavy duty ones. Obviously you wanna make sure that they are appropriately built for the weight of a smoker, which is you know probably gonna be 600,000 pounds at the end of the day. And I just weld them on, which if I was a better welder or less lazy, I would probably make a bolting system in case one of these breaks. But uh, also these come apart. So as long as this doesn't break, we'll be all right. Enjoyed. And that is it for a super basic frame, especially for this design. The frame is super simple because the firebox actually sits on top of the frame itself. As opposed to a smoker like this size where I'd have to lift it up, but this one's a lot bigger, so don't need to worry about it. I could throw the vertical beams on there right now, but because I've never built a reverse flow, I can't really figure out how tall to make them until I get it set up. So we'll deal with that down the road. And basically when it comes to making a frame, I always make it just as wide as the tank is itself. I also make the firebox as wide as the tank. That way it's even all the way across, but you can also get creative, make it thinner, or have the arms bow in or whatever you like, but this is the most super basic way to go about it. So that's all we're gonna do on the frame for right now, but I think it's time to go ahead and make the firebox. Because once we have the frame, we can put the firebox on it, and then we can get the pipe on there, get that all leveled up, and uh, as you can see, I've already got a pretty good head start on that firebox. So when it comes to building a firebox, there is a whole world of options. The simplest thing to do would be just get yourself another piece of pipe, throw it on the cook chamber and call it a day. You could also make a square firebox. That's a little bit easier for the home garage just because it's a lot easier to get it lined up as opposed to having two cylinders being perfectly lined up. Then you get into the world of insulating a firebox, which you could put a pipe inside of another pipe. You could put a pipe inside of a box. And as far as insulating goes, you can do an air gap or you can fill it up with some actual ceramic fiber blanket. And what that does is just really increases the efficiency of your 
fire, which sounds like a good thing, but you can overdo it really easily, especially on a cooker this size for the backyard. If you insulated that firebox one, because that's a 20 inch firebox, it'd be really tough to get these full size logs in there. And also you'd end up throwing wood chunks and toothpicks in there to get that thing up to 300 degrees and it would probably run too hot. So my general rule of thumb is the bigger the cooker, the more likely you're gonna want to semi or fully insulate it. So on this size pit we're building today, which is 115 gallon, I think a semi insulation would probably be the best. And anything bigger than that, you're definitely gonna want to think about it. You know, a 250, 500 gallon, 1000 gallon. If you don't insulate a 1000 gallon smoke, you're gonna have to throw seven to eight logs in there just to get the whole cook chamber even. And then you're probably gonna get a big hot spot from that roaring fire in the front. So generally speaking, the bigger the pit, the more you're gonna want some insulation. But that also depends on your steel thickness. It also depends where you are. If you're in Canada, you're definitely gonna want one because you wanna burn an efficient fire that doesn't chew through too many logs. But at the same time, if it's too efficient, you basically have a wood powered oven and you're not gonna get much smoke flavor on your meat. For me personally, I build my fireboxes different than most other people. And that's simply because sourcing plate steel is a lot easier for me than sourcing pipes that are the correct size for each smoker. It's also really difficult to cut a chunk off of a pipe with an angle grinder and have a nice flat, even edge, which is why I like to build box style fireboxes. It also leaves the top open to throw a grill or a pizza oven or something fun on top, or at least a griddle top, making it a little more multifunctional. But the problem with making a square firebox is you don't want your logs sitting flat down because then they're gonna smolder. There's no airflow between the coal bed and the woods. And you're gonna end up with a smoldering fire with a lot of dirty smoke. It's gonna be really hard to maintain temps. The second smoker I ever built had that and it was a pain in the ass to run. So what I did to mimic the round firebox bottom was create the V system that I've been putting in all of my smokers for years now, which is simply enough on that smoker, just a bent V sitting like this. That way your logs can sit horizontally across with some nice airflow and burn a really nice clean fire that way. But this one, like I mentioned, we are gonna do a semi-insulated firebox on it. And what I used to do is just get a square piece coming up, square piece coming up, and then put a V in the bottom. But like I mentioned in last week's video, this is a really great time to outsource to someone with heavy machinery. Oh boy. Good. So as you can see, this is two pieces. We got the top, the front, the back, as one bent piece. I got this done at a local fabrication shop that has a big hydraulic brake and a water jet machine. So I also got them to cut out the exchange between the cook chamber and the firebox, and of course, the door. And as far as the centerpiece is concerned, I'm basically building this upside down right now. So this is the V bottom, and these are the two sides to insulate the side, side, and bottom. And I gotta say, I used to just buy four by eight sheets and cut all these pieces out individually, and it was so much more welding, because you have to weld every seam. Not only for strength, but also for air tightness. You know, you don't want smoke leaking out. So anytime there's a bend like this, that is two feet of welding that I don't have to do. Very nice. Although it's gonna cost you. Again, you can check out some of my earlier build videos where I used to do everything from scratch, but that was a few years ago. And nowadays, it's nice to work smarter, not harder. So now all we need to do is weld all this together. And we've got another piece sitting over there that'll then go right on top, be this side, the bottom, and the other side, making life very convenient, a lot more professional, saving time, and making it just better all the way around. Love it. Brooke, will you flip that onto its side for me real quick? Ha! What was that? Ha! I'll do it. Do it. You gotta bust out the Joe Yim crate for this one. That is a lot of welding, folks. And there we go, after some rather tedious alignment, this thing is looking good, and now all we need to do is just weld up all of these seams. Should be fun.
And as you can see, nice big weld, about 20 minutes with an angle grinder, and you can get some nice clean corners. Missed a few spots, but I don't really care. You also don't have to sand down your welds, but it does look nice. And just like that, after a whole bunch of welding and grinding off camera, this firebox is finally done. Looking nice and clean, got that beautiful V in there, about two inch insulated walls, not too shabby. Cleaned up every single weld all the way around, just to make it look nice. And now I need to figure out how I'm going to get this off this table and onto this frame, which has already started rusting. Hmm. But first things first, we gotta get the door on this thing. So, over here I got some half inch rod and some three quarter tube. That's what we're gonna make the hinges out of for our firebox door. Some nice thick stuff. And you really wanna find the 120 DOM tube like this that fits a rod perfectly. Otherwise, we're gonna have a lot of rattle and you don't want that. <laughs> Definitely not the most efficient way they make hinges. Woo, that's hot. Pretty good to me. Normally I bust out the acetylene torch for doing this, but I'm only doing a couple. This works just fine. Got the tube welded on and I also sanded these down because these are such a tight fit. It's always a good idea to polish these up, sand them down a little bit, take a little extra metal off so they slide right on in. Because they can in fact be too tight and not want to go in. But I got an overlay door. This is that quarter inch piece we were talking about in the other video. So now all I need to do is weld this to this and our door will be pretty much done. Next up, the old notch system. And as you can see on this one, we got this one cut with little knobs in it. We also got two holes right here, so it fits in like a puzzle piece. Pretty convenient. Ooh. And there it is, folks. Firebox is finally done. That was a lot of welding. And there's most certainly more simple designs you could go with for a firebox, but uh, I like the way this one looks. Nice, heavy duty hinges, fully welded. Those aren't going anywhere anytime soon. We've got the classic patented chud notch system. Got a little bead there so this thing doesn't go flying all over the place in either direction. Very nice, that's the whole V thing in action right there. Have a nice bed of charcoal, real clean burning fire. Big old firebox, you can fit a whole bunch of logs in there. Nice smooth clean welds all the way around. Got the exchange on the back. This one's definitely lower than I would typically do for a regular offset because this is in fact a reverse flow. Normally it would just be straight up on this area, but uh, yeah, looking good. Got the nice quarter inch overlay door, much more simple than the whole picture frame design I used to do where you frame it out kind of like the door of the offset itself and just got a classic bolt little wing nut couple washers in there I'll probably get a smaller bolt eventually maybe tack that in that is the basic Chud's barbecue firebox and all this real estate on top for whatever we want although probably not much on this one because that's where the smokestack is gonna be nice and shiny and a whole bunch of 3 16th inch thick steel all right John that is it that is how I make the firebox and the frame for an offset smoker this is how I've been doing it for years pretty basic stuff nothing too complicated just a lot of welding and a lot of angle grinder action and be sure to tune in next week when we get this thing mounted onto the frame that we just built and we'll get the cook chamber up and talk all about that and just keep on trucking with this reverse flow smoker build but all that being said if you enjoyed this video let me know by hitting that subscribe button that youtube know by dropping a like on this video if you've got any pit builds of your own feel free to tag me on instagram i love to see what other people are building let me know down in the comments if you learned anything or if you got any tips for me big shout out to all the patreon members thank you for supporting team chud and allowing me to keep making all of these videos and until the next time i see you please go cook something outside peace